my paranormal peeps, and welcome back to another Deep Woods Paranormal Podcast. My name is Matt Harvey. I am the founder and lead investigator with Deep Woods Paranormal. My wife and I, along with others, investigate everything paranormal in nature. Every week, we will discuss everything from creepy haunted locations to ghosts to Bigfoot, UFOs, Dogman, and other cryptid creatures, and explore all things paranormal in nature. Hey, guys. So I get asked all kinds of questions. Are, are we going to find Bigfoot in 2024? Uh, I got a lot of other questions too, you know, and I'll go into those in a second. But yes, we are going to be exploring Texas uh, again this year, and we will be looking for Bigfoot. Our primary focus now is turning to Bigfoot. Uh, let me share my screen with you real quick, and I can show you the happy glamper. All right. So you can see our truck. Um, it's you can't see the new stickers we have on here that says Bigfoot Research Team, but you can see our trailer. Uh, we have a 30 foot Springdale, uh, which is now going to be our home base. Uh, when we go out into the woods, uh, we'll probably have uh, this set up at a campsite somewhere uh, or somewhere off grid, and uh, essentially uh, be parked there. And we'll, we're going to try and put cameras all around this thing facing out in every different direction and uh we'll be in the middle of bigfoot territory and then we'll cover that in just a second we'll talk about bigfoot territory uh that we're looking to cover this year uh there's a lot of it it's just like probably millions of acres that we want to cover but we have specific spots that we want to look into and we'll we'll talk about that in just a second so a lot of people ask me questions, you know, <laughs> a lot of people ask me, have you found Bigfoot? And the question is a good question. It's, it's, it's both a yes and no answer. Um, yes. You know, I've had multiple sightings and I have lots of friends that have had multiple sightings. We've been all been lucky enough to be in the right place at the right time. I think uh, we've uh, also done a lot of research. We followed up on a lot of uh, different reports and then we've had our own sightings, and then we've looked up um, the data that is online uh, for credible reports, and we follow that data and pin those on a map, which I've shown you guys multiple times, but we have so many new followers and uh, so many new subscribers to both the audio podcast and the video podcast, to our YouTube channel and our Rumble channel, um, that I just need to go kind of back into this because we're, we're constantly meeting new people um our rumble page is growing uh, astronomically so thank you if you're following us over on rumble if you're over on youtube and you're just starting to watch this uh please like and subscribe we do more than just podcasts we are paranormal researchers um we are going to be shooting our own show called exploring the unknown with matt and amanda where we go uh research everything paranormal uh bigfoot ufos ghosts hauntings demons uh you name it lockdowns we're going to be doing all that uh, we've already started, and if I ever get anything edited, we'll start getting those shows out to you guys uh, as soon as possible. But I wanted to go into some of the questions that people ask me. Uh, let's see, are there are there truly any Bigfoot experts? Again, I think that's a yes and no question. Um, I think you know there is no person that you can say knows everything about Bigfoot. That and that would be considered an expert. Uh, mm -hmm. it, if if you can't just basically pick somebody up and tell them, okay, which forest do you want me to drop you off in, what spot, and then you know send them out and they're going to go find a Bigfoot. You know they're either capture one on video or get a clear picture of one, uh, get some hair samples, get some footprints, you know, uh, and and actually physically be able to kind of bring a Bigfoot back or or something like that, um, something to that. I mean, there's really no experts. Now that said. There's a lot of people like me, uh, there's enthusiasts, there's experts in fields. So that's kind of like if you have footprints, you have footprints experts, you have um, you have footprint experts, you have vocalization experts, you have primate experts, you have hair sample experts, you have um, trackers, you have... Uh, People that are are uh, really good with analyzing video uh, and, and analyzing audio, and uh, you have people that are really good with um, both. 
Um, you have uh, people like me that I'm kind of like somewhere in that mix. Um, I don't know everything about the forest. I'm still learning as I go. I'm constantly learning. And as I meet with new people and hear their stories and um, get to, sh you know, have them tell me different things and uh, stuff like that. Sorry, my phone is now going crazy for some reason. Um, <laughs> anyways, um, so as we continue to uh, research and meet new people and hear their stories and go out with different people, um, different hunters and different um, other Bigfoot researchers, and stuff like that. We're kind of learning as we go. Um, you know, we're learning that, oh, well, that's not a Bigfoot, that's a this. And that's that noise is that. And, you know, trees actually do grow at, in a in a loop shape. I mean, they, they those those bins that we keep talking about, you know, where there's hundreds of loops in a in a forest, but you know, trees will grow at an angle or grow over and then kind of grow down towards the ground. Uh, to to get a better angle to get more sun, so this is something I would I'm I'm constantly trying to learn. Um, you know, we need we need people that are experts in different trees, and that can tell us if a tree bend is is a real thing uh, or if it's just something that's natural. And I don't think every tree bend is is natural, and I don't think that every tree bend is a Bigfoot. Um, you've got footprints, um, you've got people that analyze footprints. Um, I don't do that yet. I'm still learning that. I'm still having other people take a look at everything for me. Um, you have people that will analyze video. You have people that will analyze audio and stuff like that. And I've heard a lot of crazy things. I've spent a lot of time in the forest. Uh, Amanda is still learning, uh, as well. Uh, she's never had a Bigfoot sighting. So, um, to get to the point here. Uh, I, I don't really think there's a, a 100% Bigfoot expert, but I think Pete, there's a lot of experts in different fields. Like you have, uh, to elaborate on that too, uh, you have people that analyze Bigfoot videos and they're really good at telling you whether that's CGI, is that fake, is that a hoax, uh, you know, could that be real? You have people that, you know, specialize in thermal imaging you have people that specialize in audio that can break down the audio and tell you, you know, if that's something natural or if that's something that isn't natural, um, you know, if it's something that could be possibly something unknown. You have primate, um, you know, people that study primates, which is great because we don't know if Bigfoot is a primate, a humanoid, a mix between the two or something completely different. Um, you know, it's, there's all these unanswered questions about Bigfoots and that's why we're out here in the field doing it. Um, you know, we're, we're basically a field researching team. We're out in the field. We're exploring, trying to come up with footprints, um, uh, tree bins, hair samples. We just got a hair sample from a uh, client the other day, um, collect vocalizations, get some video, um, and, and document these things and try and document their behaviors so that someone um, that has a little bit more knowledge than I and maybe in primates or in human evolution or whatever can look through and and research this, this them themselves and maybe come back with some kind of answers as well. So there is no Bigfoot expert or, or any in anything. Um, ghost hunting, you know, you name it. Demonology. There's, you know, everybody claims to be an expert. They're they're not. You know, there's people like me that have had a lot of experiences and there's people that, you know, uh, like I said, specialize in certain things um, and they are experts in their field, but they're not experts at Bigfoot in general. So anyways, like I said, Bigfoot has have a lot of moving parts. There is a lot of people that need to be involved with this studies to really come together and prove that this is, is, is a real thing. Um, well, let me elaborate on that. If I could put a dream team together, I'd put, I'd find someone who's a primatologist, number one, that has, um, expertise in primates, uh, maybe to study, you know, the video videos that we've, that have been captured, the real videos that have been captured to hear people's reports and try and take that and 
look at it and say, okay, you know, this fits an ape, this fits a gorilla, this fits um, orangutan behaviors, or this might be something that they would do. And so we can kind of start to put that together with uh, that. And then, you know, you might have a footprint um, with some of that studies, b- b- footprints, Jeff Meldrum, you know, uh, to look at these, analyze these footprints and tell us what's real, what's not, you know, what uh, could be faked, what could be an accidental identification, maybe like bears like to step in their own print. So they leave a, a footprint and then a footprint on the t- where the toes start. So it looks like a longer footprint. Um, I would find somebody that could do analyze hair samples. Uh, I would find somebody that basically studied stool, you know, um, poop, if you will. Uh, because those those samples, even though they may not have great DNA, you can pull DNA out of it and or, or at least look at the samples and try and find out what possibly created that. And then also what also... Um, essentially could have uh, basically what it could have been eating and stuff like that. So if we can say, okay, we know Bigfoots are eating berries, they're eating some kind of uh, meat source or protein. They're also eating, you know, uh, maybe leaves or or whatever. And, you know, these types of fruits, um, you know, we can find, we can kind of start to take that and generalize an area where that stuff is. And then we can start to really narrow our focus down on that location. I'd also find somebody that um, is really good with navigation. And so we can kind of start to have them focus on those reports and really look at that terrain and say, okay, this is why they're in this area. Look, there's a river here. There's a lake here. Um, This is a good area for, for, um, deer and stuff like that. I would also have a professional hunter on the team, which we kind of do. We have several people that are hunters that assist us in different places. Uh, we have a lot of uh, deep woods paranormal family members, if you will, um, in different areas throughout Texas and, and other states too that we work with. Um, and we have other friends from other groups that we share data with um, that help us kind of analyze our data and then analyze their data and we look at it and we kind of, you know, put our heads together to figure out why this happened, if you will, whether it's a sighting or a scream or whatever. And then, like I said, you have people that can analyze audio, analyze video, um, somebody that can actually sit there and, and um, study uh, those. And then also um, somebody that could basically just take reports, uh, be really good with uh, taking calls from people. Because when people call or text or message us or whatever, uh, it's it's not easy for them to do that. It's really not. It's not easy for them to call and say, I saw this or I heard that or, you know, I saw a Bigfoot. I know it was a Bigfoot. It couldn't be anything else. Um, that's very difficult because a lot of people ridicule people out here. Uh, you know, you have a lot of hunters and other people out here that are, out, you know, a lot of the people out here in Texas are outdoors people and they spend a lot of time in the forest and they spend a lot of time hiking and, and whatever in, in the forest, which is awesome. I love it. Uh, I love to meet those kind of people because they're full of information. So, but they're also very skeptical of Bigfoot, which is great. I mean, unfortunately, well, maybe fortunately for them, they've never seen one and they've never experienced one, which is awesome. I mean, they're not, Bigfoots are not everywhere. They're in, certain geological areas, geographical areas, excuse me, I misspoke. Um, so in a lot of those areas are, are very remote that are, you know, some of them are not, but most of them are, you know, sometimes Bigfoot is closer than we think. So anyway, so let me stop sharing my screen. Actually, what's going on here? My little mouse is not working for me. Here we go. All right, so let me close this picture. Let me go back to okay i don't care if that's i need to pop this back open and i need to go back to zoom okay we're going to share our screen again and we're going to go here so i'm going to share my screen with you guys again if you're listening i'll try and do my best to describe everything as best i can 
Um, first of all, I want to, again, thank all of our new subscribers to everything. Uh, we have a lot of new subscribers to the podcast. We have a lot of new subscribers to our YouTube and Rumble page. Uh, we're always getting new friends requests and new followers on Facebook for our Facebook group and stuff like that. And then uh, on Instagram and Twitter and all that stuff. So um, thank you guys for, for uh, subscribing and liking our stuff. Uh, it really helps us to get our content out there and share our research with everyone who's interested. So a lot of people, I've been meeting a lot of people lately. I mean, not lately, we've been meeting people all, all over uh, for the last couple of years now, especially in Texas. And they always ask me, oh, I love your hat. Oh, I, you know, I'm rocking the Deep Woods Paranormal um, Bigfoot t-shirt here. Uh, where did Where do you get that? Where do you get the apparel? Well, it's on our website. So you can see we have all different hats. We have all different shirts. I'm not going to go into this too much, but our our um, deepwoodsparanormal.com page is a nonstop shop for everything Deepwoods Paranormal. Uh, and by that, I mean our YouTube channel is here. Uh, our podcast is here. Our store is here. Public events, and I'll talk about public events in a second. I talked about this last time, but you can see all of our content um, is here. Uh, I'm going to try and start posting some shorts. Uh, I'm going to go through some uh, evidence uh, with you guys, um, and I'll start doing that separately, I think, from here on out. and not doing it on the podcast as much because people like the separate videos that are shorter where I quickly you know, describe what happened and uh, what we got and stuff like that. So uh, the most recent one was the Black Star uh, Eye Shine, Black Star Canyon Eye Shine out in Orange County, and I showed you a video of something walking behind us you can just see the eye shine whatever it was was about eight feet tall and uh you know we i could hear it walking back there and, and i you know I, I purposely put a camera facing back towards the back of the the car uh, and we had my dad's suv so i put the camera in the back before we parked and then as we parked i popped the door open and had a recording as i was getting gear out and sure enough something comes walking up behind us peering in to see what we're doing so we caught a Bigfoot possibly being curious, and you can kind of see the eye shot, and you can't see the rest of it. And I wish I would have had uh, the camera we had now uh, with all the you know IR light that we have uh, because we could have clearly seen probably what it was. So we've got, we've got that issue solved now. We've got uh, IR flashlights, and we've got a camera that can see about 40, 50 feet in complete darkness uh, pretty clearly. So it's not like, you know, you're not going to be able to see it, but that's for future. All right. So our, our YouTube here, podcast here. Um, so if, if you aren't on one of our audio podcasts or you want to come watch the videos, this is our audio only podcast on here. So you can see we have, I think this is podcast, uh, audio podcast or podcast in general, 167. So we're closing in on 200. Uh, and these podcasts will come out every Friday. So anyways, um, you can see I just did the 2023 year podcast um, in review. Uh, we talked about a lot of places we went and stuff like that. So if you want to go back and listen to that, you can. And there's a lot of other podcasts here. Um, and we're going to be doing, we're going to be interviewing uh, a lot of people. Let me come here. This is my friend. Um, oh my gosh. Hey, Harley. Harley Owens. He is a fellow Bigfoot researcher he has a Facebook group called Data Report and uh, and Data, and uh, he's just a really fun guy to talk to. I've been working with him quite a bit lately uh, regarding Bigfoot. He's up in, I think he's in the Ozarks. So uh, basically he goes out to different places and he's had a lot of luck finding Bigfoot activity. Um, he may have gotten a lot of Bigfoots on camera. We'll let you guys decide. But if you want to go check out his group, it's Bigfoot Data and Report, Bigfoot Report and Data, excuse me, on Facebook. So I want to give him a shout out. He's going to be coming on our podcast this weekend and he'll be on uh, the podcast next Friday. So that'll be for you guys. Um, so anyways, moving on. So y'all have seen our Bigfoot map. You can see it basically goes across the United States. Now, I don't know why, but when I zoom out, it, it takes all the pens off. I don't know why it does this. Maybe you're only allowed to have a certain amount 
Um, why did this do this? So let me fix the map here. There we go. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. So we'll just go back. We'll close this. All right. So for some reason, when you put it in Bigfoot, it takes them all out. But you can see all the reports. I don't, this is just, this is not even close to being all of them. Uh, this is just the reports that I've been getting across the U.S., uh, lately and there's been some up in Canada too um, but essentially all down here as well coming all the way down through British Columbia and into Alaska I thought I yeah there was a go there's a pin for Alaska as well so yeah I've been getting a lot of reports from people not just here in Texas but all across the United States and then I also follow several other people from other states and that I find credible and I pin their reports as well California, I know. Uh, I used to have as many pins in California as I do. And oh, come on, phone. Um, here in uh, Texas, but unfortunately, when we moved, uh, Google decided to wipe my my pins off the map for some weird reason. So we're going to stay here, focused in Texas, and we're going to talk about some places. Uh, like I said. I've talked about the Texas Triangle multiple times. You can't see it, but this is San Antonio uh, down here. And then you get Houston uh, over here. And then you've got Dallas and Fort Worth. So essentially, this is what I call the Texas Triangle. Now, this Texas Triangle should actually go out into Louisiana and come over to like New Orleans and come back across. But because we're only talking about Texas today, we're going to just keep it to San Antonio Dallas and Houston. Now that does include all of East Texas as well. You can see how many pens are dropped over here. There's so many forests over here. This is all this whole side of Texas is a good a good chunk of forest. Excuse me. Um, there's also a lot of reports. I live in the Brazos Valley, so I'm down here by College Station. There's a lot of reports of Bigfoots in this area all along the Brazos River if you will. Now, a lot of those reports are old and we've been getting some new ones from people in our area recently. Um, we're going to be meeting with them so soon. Um, if you'd like to report a Bigfoot sighting, uh, there's multiple ways you can contact us through, again, through our website. I come back here. You can come onto this contact, um, contact us and just leave us a message. If you come to the homepage, you can come down here and you can contact us just here. Just put your name. You don't have to put your last name, email, and just send us a message. Saw Bigfoot in the San Antonio, uh, San Antonio at this location. Uh, if you want to remain anonymous, go for it. You know, we don't need to tell everybody your name or anything like that, but I want to stay on here. So a lot of these reports are just coming in from people um, like crazy. Uh, so let's just start talking about different places we plan on investigating this year. Uh, we've been investigating the Sam Houston National Forest for the last two years. And what happens is when you start investigating a large area like this, let me zoom back into the Sam Houston National Forest because it's just such a huge area. There's an area here, there's an area here, and there's an area over here. So you got three big chunks of area, and you got clusters in each one. Um, but unfortunately, I don't think a lot of people report a lot of, the, of their sightings over here in the Sam Houston National Forest. Um, we do have a couple friends that live in the Sam Houston National Forest, and we are essentially working with them to try and, um, you know, locate these areas to investigate and to try and come in here. Uh, unfortunately, the Sam Houston National Forest is one of those areas where people have investigated quite a bit let me show you the same use of national forest let me see if there's any actual pictures so if i go into the sam houston national forest and i start looking for I wonder if there's pictures no so it's interesting that they don't have any pictures here here we go sam houston national forest here's some pictures you can see it's very woody uh, here's a video, and uh, you can see that it's just a 
very wooded area, very secluded. Some of it's really hard to get to. There's a lot of trails where you can bike, you can horseback ride, you can um, essentially uh, bike on like a motorbike. Um, you can take, uh, you know, you can camp in here. There's a lot of campgrounds and stuff like that. And it's just a different, here's some of the trails. Uh, Lone Star Hiking Trail is very popular. And then you can camp here and there's all kinds of different uh, ponds and rivers and lakes and stuff like that. So there's a lot of different areas down here to explore. Um, so you can see this is a, a huge bonfire somebody's doing. But yeah, I mean, you can walk through here forever. Here's somebody crossing a log. Uh, I don't want to stay too long in here, but yeah, we're going to be coming back to the Sam Houston National Forest and exploring this. Uh, let me go back to here. We plan on actual staying in the Sam Houston National Forest as well. Let me go back to their website. There we go. So we'll be we'll be coming in here again. Uh, we've been doing this, and we'll be we're spending a lot of time here. Here's the Davy Crockett National Forest. Now this area does not have a lot of um, reports, which is strange. Uh, you think the Davy Crockett National Forest being such a large area would have a lot of, of reports and there aren't many. Um, so, but we know there's Bigfoots in this area. We know we've actually met with several witnesses that have told us they've had, you know, experiences in here. So you can see there's only like four or five pins in this area. I'd imagine this whole forest area is going to be really, really active. And you can see it's not very far from the Sam Houston National Forest. So I'd imagine the Sam Houston National Forest has several groups of Bigfoots. And then I imagine the Davy Crockett has several groups of Bigfoots. Now you can see how wooded this is. I would imagine that these two groups send probably... Uh, males back and forth between the two groups. I would imagine they migrate between these two forests and essentially, you know, mate with each other so that they don't get a bunch of, uh, you know, weird siblings, if you will. Uh, but yeah, that's this is definitely a place that we want to check out. If you've had an experience in the Davy Crockett National Forest, please, please come forward. Again, there's no judgment we're not going to ridicule you. We're not going to make fun of you. Uh, we are very interested in serious reports. And if you've had a sighting or you've heard a scream or if you heard tree knocks, um, we don't have to meet with you in person. Uh, we just want to know where you had your experience. You can even just text us with a, a drop pin. People have done that. Um, so, yeah, Davy Crockett National Forest is another one we got to go. Uh, let me move on to the next one because this is starting to get long, long. Angeles National Forest. Now, let's take a look at the Angeles National Forest. This is over here. So here's the Davy Crockett. Here's the Sam Houston. And basically you get like a, not quite a triangle, but you could honestly kind of go like this, like this, like this and back. And there are a lot of reports over in the Angeles, in, in and around the Angeles National Forest. Uh, I think I talked to a guy that said he had an experience where um, he was launching his boat and a Bigfoot came walking out of the um, forest and looked at him and turned and went right back in. So, yeah, there's a there's a lot of um, reports in the Angeles National Forest. Again, if you've had a sighting or anything over here and you want to report um, a uh, you know an experience. Feel free to contact us. Okay, so let's move on to this one. That's the Angeles National Forest. There we go. So the Sabine National Forest. Um, you guys, I'll I'll leave these pen, I'll leave these links in the uh, description of the video, uh, either audio or video, uh, and you guys can go look at these as well. So let's go up to the Sabine National Forest, which should be up here. Where are you? Sabine National Forest. So this is up where Joe used to live. Uh, where is the Sabine National Forest? Hold on. I'm not just short of it, I think. Bear with me, guys. 
I don't know exactly what happened here. So where's the Sabine National Forest? It's not that far away. All right, so bear with me for a minute here. All right, it's just not showing up. Okay, now we found it. Okay, so here's the Sabine National Forest. So this is over by where Joe used to live, and he had a lot of experiences over here. I mean, he lived, what do you live, down in Shelbyville? He lived down by Shelbyville, I think. And so, essentially, we were going to come over into this area of land and do uh, Indian Mountains Wilderness Area. And we were going to do some research over here. Uh, Joe took us all over the place and took us to places where he had heard about uh, different types of Bigfoot reports. And we were in the process of meeting with different people. Um, a lot of people are asking me about um, let me go up here public events, public Bigfoot events. And I kind of answered this last time. Uh, this is Joe's camp. We were going to set up um, some RV spots and places for people to camp on his property. And unfortunately, Joe um, has recently passed uh, late last year. So we aren't able to do that anymore, unfortunately. Mm. All right, guys, since this podcast is getting a little long, uh, we're going to be doing part one and part two. Uh, next Friday, we'll have Harley Owens on. Again, my friend for, uh, who is also a Bigfoot researcher. He's up in the Ozark Mountains. So he'll be coming on next Friday. This will, this other part two will probably release sometime next week, uh, Monday or Tuesday. And so you guys can uh, watch it there or listen there. Okay? All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for liking the video. And we will catch you on the next one.